Today in history, obviously my favorite part of the breakfast, <laughs> we talk about what happened on this day years gone by. Today we're going back to 1956, December the 22nd, uh, a baby gorilla whose birth was not planned in the first instance. Um, it was just the shenanigans of um, an undergraduate, a student, a veterinary student in a university, putting two um, gorillas together, uh, Baron and Millie, that's all, Christina, if you please, to hang out. And then, poof! We saw an amniotic uh, fluid. Amniotic. I don't. Oh, did I get that word? Uh, amniotic. Yes. Amniotic uh, fluid sack outside, and then oh my gosh, there is a baby, and that's how we got Kolo. His birth was unplanned, but he was one of the celebrate most celebrated animals, um, celebrity. Let's use it that way. Um, okay, let me just break it down a bit. On this day, um, the name Kolo was given to the gorilla to be the first gorilla to be born in captivity uh, the name is a combination of columbus and ohio and uh, the two gorillas that i mentioned the parents uh, millie and mark was the world's at the time they were famous as well because they worked together um, i also mentioned already that uh, she was born um, accidentally there was no plan for her but she just happened um, the baby was given a mouth to mouth and uh, she survived. But because the parents did not have any parenting skill, they've been in captivity for a while, um, the zookeepers had to raise Kolo like a normal baby. They gave him formula, they gave her, rather, I beg your pardon, they gave her formulas, they put her in diapers and um, um, all of that. Now, uh, gorillas are basically vegetarians, as we know, and they always claim, I mean, um, um, human rights, um, animal rights activists claim that we humans are their worst, uh, yeah, <laughs> their yeah, worst I mean, enemy I, I, because I, I, I we would agree. go to uh, capture them and all of that. But the intriguing thing I find about this is on the average, a gorilla that is in the wild lives for 35 years, but in captivity, they live longer. And in the case of Kolo, uh, she survived for, she died in 2017. Mm -hmm. So she stayed for a long while and, you know, opened the conversation about animal care in the zoo and how you're going to uh, raise them. She had her baby uh, not so um, uh, long and then she became a great grandmother, a, a, a grandmother and then a great grandmother. Uh, today we know that there are approximately 750 gorillas in captivity around the world and um, most zoo are active in captive breeding program, but we know that there's also been an evolution. Uh, when you think about uh, just suppose the conversation around humans being there among their worst enemies, and then you see that they live longer when they're in captivity, you now begin to, well, what, what is humane? And what is humane that we are seeing today is that they, they are trying harder to recreate the natural wild environment in the zoos. They, they live longer in captivity um, because they are kept in zoos and they are fed and they are, you know, taken care of. Um, doesn't make it better for them. Um, I agree. It's um, not, in it's, the first place, right, Kolo sir. maybe wouldn't have been born if um, his parents weren't captured um, in French Cameroon in the first place. In, as early as 1951. Um, there's a lot of um, activism against circuses and zoo animals and keeping these um, animals, uh, you know, in captivity for just for human, you know, pleasure and, en and enjoyment for years. They should be in the wild. They should be in the in the seas. Those dolphins should be in the seas. Gorillas should be in the forest or wherever they they should belong. And yes, I would agree that human beings have become the worst virus on the earth, on Mother Earth itself, against animals, against the seas, against, you know, the, 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 the uh, forests, you know, and, and the trees, against everything. And one of the reasons that we might be seeing um, a lot of the diseases and a lot of the, the um, natural disasters that might be coming up, you know, in, in these times, that some of the effects of human beings, you know, decades and centuries ago, 
Uh, we've been a total disaster to Mother Earth. And we're, we should, we should we're also, we also have a lot of humans. In everything there is, I, I don't know, I'm always on trying to see the light at the end of the tunnel. We've mm. also worked hard to try and, I mean, there is a whole um, a group championing uh, preservation of our climate, asking us to be a bit more, you know, sustainable in the way that we behave. So, and there are people who, no, let me, let me come. There are people who are vegetarian simply because they are against the killing and the eating of animals. There are people, so in every cluster, even in the animal world, you survive so, or you so, die. So these groups come up <laughs> because of the actions of human beings. That's yeah, why. we're also humans. <laughs> it is humans that are coming up to protect. I mean, it's a contradiction. But at the end of the day, there is humans. We are a mix of good and, and evil. Yes, so no we, we, we try to amplify the good as against, uh, for me, the evil will kill you, like if you think about it. But the little good, and that's the care. She was a celebrity. She was well cared for. And in spite of the fact that she was in captivity, she brought a lot of joy to a lot of people. She probably, if she was born in the wild, I'm looking at the plus side now, if she was born and in the wild and she died maybe a year after, we would never know about Kolo. Why we would do, not why, be why celebrating her. Why do we need a celebrity so. gorilla in the first place? Anyway, let, <laughs> let's, let's, the let's move on. Um, his name is John Wayne Gacy. He was born in 1942, uh, lived in, um, in between o Ohio, Iowa, and um, 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 California, I believe. His face um, or Chicago, there. I beg your pardon. He's popularly known as the Killer Clown. Um, his atrocities started in 1978, and today is relevant in this story because it is on this day that he confessed to killing about 33 young boys and men, a lot of them who he claimed were male prostitutes in the Chicago area. Um, 29 of them were found under his house. Three of them were found in, a, in neighboring rivers, um, including the main, um, sus or the main victim that, that led, led to his to arrest, thing, um, yeah. a boy called Piest. Um, John Wayne Gacy was... Um, who well, had a pretty decent regular upbringing. There were claims that his father was an alcoholic and um, was abusive. It um, is always when people commit crimes. Yeah, like they always go always, back in history yes. to see you know where they're coming from. You know, but it's, it's still not a good enough excuse. I'll, I, um, I do have finish up. I'll, I do have a controversial perspective. Yeah, on this. I mean, so it's it's basically talking about you know today and how he he eventually got to confess. If you read very very deep in the story, because I spent a lot of time yesterday reading about the investigation, reading about how you know these things were eventually uncovered. It's a very, very interesting investigation. Um, and the very final, I think the 48 hours before he eventually confessed, when he knew that he had been caught, um, are also very, very interesting. There were court orders um, granted to do a, a search of his home. The first time that police officers went there, they didn't notice anything. And then the second time, when they, were, when they got a, a warrant to, um, to search his house again, that's when they discovered that there was a certain smell coming mm -hmm. from underneath the house. And um, they got another warrant to set the house, and then they started searching and seeing bones and human parts and skulls and, and the likes. Um, he basically was a person who would lure his colleagues, lure his employees. He, he used to manage three uh, KFC uh, outlets. He would lure some of these boys to his home, drug them, tie them up, uh, convince them that there was going to be some sort of sexual play that needed them to be handcuffed. And well, we will never truly know what transpired inside because he is the teller and the doer. So there's always, for me, there's always, you know, an issue around when people confess, mm. right? There was red flag when he was originally um, convicted for sexually assaulting a young boy. When he was just 25 years old, he lost his wife and his yes, kids as a result of that. And then 64. this same person evolved to become a public figure, a politician who was, you know, known at the time, Popular nobody could community. tell. Yes. But the controversial part I'm, I'm, I'm looking at is the evolution of homosexuality and how it came to be today. As at that time, there were summons about how vile you are, how terrible you are. There are still summons like, summons like that today, but then it was amplified. And for somebody who was unstable and feels filthy, you do things and you want to hide it. You don't want people to know. This kind of thing will make you even go deeper in thinking of ways. That's a mind that's already twisted. Yeah. And then you now have tendencies that you can't seem to control. 
He was killing young boys after sexually yes. um, molesting them. And it, it, it's not something that happened in a short period of time. It happened over, over time. Uh, uh, over time. He was 52. 72 to 78. Yes, he was 52 at the time he, was, he finally confessed. So imagine the life this man had lived in the shadows. That red flag for me when he was 25 years old and assaulted a young boy. Nobody kept light, uh, touch light on him. So, so, and that was because he, he was sentenced to jail for 10 years. And but only got to spend 18 months. Yeah, you know, out of good behavior, he was released and led back into society and then got, you know, married again. And of course, you know, started all, you know, his killings, you know, eventually in 1972. He was, I think he, he was arrested in, um, at first in 1968, when he was set, you know, free, then started killing in 1972. You don't want, you don't want people straight. to know this other part of you we uh, you see there's I, I keep forgetting the particular how the phrase they say there is no act to uh, interpret what's in the mind on the face, on the face. I'm, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm getting there uh, because people look different and what they actually do in secret is quite different he could not leave the kind of life probably that he wanted to mm -hmm. and he felt it's not a justification for killing people, but as a society, we also play a role. When people are compelled to suppress their natural tendencies and then it becomes so repulsive to even them, we will continue to have scenarios like this. And that's why I said my perspective might be a bit controversial this morning, if but I think that as a society, we play a role in some of these atrocities. Red flag missed and then... Preaching yeah. about yeah. evil. And, and next time, you know, someone is sentenced to, uh, you know, given a 10-year jail term for sexual assault, he should spend, you know, a good eight years before you start talking about his character. Not uh, uh, angel, you see angel, you don't know it's, the best in a devil. If you, if you also have time, and I know we need to move on, if you also have time, um, if, if things like that interest you, take a look at the world's worst serial killers. And it's, it's, oh, no. It's I, a, I thank you very so much. I need a happy Christmas <laughs> filled with joy an and happiness. <laughs> uh, if not for work, I probably wouldn't be reading about this man. Why should I be reading about somebody who takes other people's life? I wanna, uh, really, let me I would share rather something. not. <laughs> so one of the worst ones is it was a child murderer and a rapist known as Kukri. Um, who uh, allegedly murdered up to 100 street children by strangling them. Um, it was arrested in 1999. I want to read what the judge said. He eventually died in, uh, in custody before he was executed. Um, John Gacy was um, executed by lethal injection in 1994, mm -hmm. by the way. Uh, the judge said you will be strangled to death in front of uh, the parents of those children you killed. Your body would then be cut into 100 pieces and put in acid the same way you killed the children. But he didn't get to experience that because he died in custody. I don't know why this excites me. Good morning. You, we... you, you have, you have, I'm saying it on national. There's something about your mind. It's a bit. Anyway, that's today in history for us. Um, we're taking a look. I'd like to talk about the gorilla Kolo. I like that one better because, I mean, yes, she might have uh, been in captivity, but she lived a full life and uh, brought joy. To, uh, the, her naming was a competition. That's the part that we forgot to mention. Yes. Her naming was actually a competition, and a couple wanted to give her the name, a combination of uh, Columbus and, and Ohio. Uh, Ohio. That's it for today in history. We go on a short breather, and when we come back, we'll be looking at the 2021 budget. There's an extension of the old one. How will that affect the new one? Stay with us. We'll have our guest on standby. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.